Hello, everyone. My name is Victoria. I'm a customer support specialist with Punch Pass. Thank you all for joining us. It's about that time, so we're going to get started with our webinar. Thank you all for joining. So today our topic is how to optimize your social media and specifically for the fitness industry and a lot of different things that we see punch pass users do. We think that would be really beneficial for you to look at and consider some creative ideas that we've worked on and that um, some of our users have worked on and really to kind of get you started or you know, help you make the best of what you're working on today. Uh, one of the really important things that we're seeing right now is that there's a really big increase in online activity. A lot of people might still be at home. They might be, um, you know, not able to do a lot of the things that they would normally be doing. So there's a little bit more time for screen time. But what that means is there's a little, little bit more time for engagement and hopefully engagement with people who might potentially be interested in taking classes with you. Um, you know, this is a really great time to take advantage of maybe some extra time that you might have uh, and, and the extra time that some of your potential customers might have and really start amping up your engagement on social media because we're seeing an increase in engagement on social media. We're seeing an increase of people's screen times. I'm sure you've probably uh, seen that. I certainly don't love seeing the screen time report every time, uh, every week from my phone, but you know, this is an opportunity and it's something that I think everyone can take advantage of. It's a really um, open platform for you to you know, promote your business and meet customers and work with different people who might be interested in engaging with you. So that's really what we're gonna get into today. So in terms of social media and you know, your opportunities here, it's a really deep topic. There's a lot of different things we could engage with and get into, but um, you know, there's a lot of different ways that you can explore this topic. Today, we're gonna to be focusing mostly on Facebook and in Instagram as platforms because they're really important in our industry. They're very popular and there's a lot of different tools available to you there that um, you can use to get more engaged, to post more content, to get creative. And so that's really what we're gonna be covering today. Um, we're gonna talk a little bit at the end about other opportunities to learn more and maybe go into a deeper dive, um, but that's what we're gonna be getting into today. So to get started, um, we're going to be looking at setting up a Facebook business account. So one of the big things about social media and using it for your business platform is to make sure that you have a separate account for your personal uh, activity and for your business. So setting up a Facebook page for your business is going to be important. And one of the first things and sort of your first introduction, so when people come to your Facebook page, maybe having not interacted with you before, it's going to be how your profile and cover photos give people a first impression. And um, in Facebook, there are two different photos here. We have our uh, profile picture, which is the circle picture you'll see with our Punch Pass P logo. And then there's the rectangular cover photo. And the important things to remember here are to make sure that these are crisp and clear logos and pictures that um, you know come across as professional, but then also get across really what your brand is and who you are as a business. So something welcoming, friendly, again, branded is what you're going to be looking for to add there and make sure that um, that looks nice. One of the cool things about the cover photo is, you know, a lot of people make that a static thing, something that represents their business, but you could also make it um, something that you change regularly. So if you do an intro offer, if you're doing some sort of special event, that might be a place to really highlight it and really focus on that. When people come to your page, they see something um, engaging and something that they could want to um, get involved with right away. And then the next thing about your Facebook uh, business page is to add a call to action. So within Facebook, you have an option to add a button right at the top of your page. So right where, um, you know, kind of next to your business name, next to your logo, it's an option to add something, a book now button, a contact us button, a learn more button, 
And we have a how-to on that in our support center, and we'll be sharing out the link to how to set this up. But this is a great opportunity um, to link to your website if you have one. If you don't, like um, you'll see here with Salt Yoga, they're linking directly to their punch pass schedule. So taking out some of the guesswork as to where something is, um, just saying book now, they click here and they get taken right to your schedule. So that's a really great option to set up right from you know, the top of your Facebook page to have that really clear and obvious. And you know, again, our goal is to get people to interact with us and you know, hopefully make the move to sign up for a class. And so having that right up at the top, sort of very highlighted by Facebook is a great way to do that. And then another really important part of your Facebook business page is the about section. So this is where um, you're going to um, be able to um, set up your information. So where you're located, um, some about, you know, basic information, what are you offering? Who are you as a business? Your website, your phone number, your contact information, your Instagram handle might be a place to also add that here if you want to promote that. But filling out this information so people know that you're a real business, um, that you're, you know, where you're located, information that they might need to know if they just wanted to take a glance um, to, you know, see what you're, uh, what you're all about. Uh, if you're a virtual business, um, you know, you might obviously not want to uh, have a location because you're doing things online, but that might be something to highlight in your information and talk about the fact that you can book online virtual classes from anywhere. So that about section is a great way to kind of get across the most important, you know, really basic information about your business that you'd want to add there. And so those are some you know, clear things that you definitely want to have on your Facebook account that'll make sure that people know who you are, get the right sort of information about your business and make sure that that's up to date and accurate is so important. So that's really, you know, kind of the basics of setting up that account, um, things that you're going to want to have on that page and ways to kind of make that, make that feel uh, appropriate for your business and uh, meet what you're kind of offering and, and who you are as a business. Now on, um, on Instagram, it's gonna be a little different and we're gonna talk a bit about the differences um, in terms of content when you're posting there as well. But in terms of setting it up, there are some similarities. Um, one thing is that the profile picture is similar to what they have set up on Facebook. It's a circle. So making sure that your logo looks nice and clean in the circle, even if it's a square, make sure the margins are good so that you can kind of get that nicely in that circle. And again, because this is your business account, we don't really recommend having your personal picture here in this, in this location. Your Instagram account is gonna have lots of pictures of you and your instructors and potentially your customers. So there will be you know, faces and friendly faces, but and, you know, the big difference between the business account is that it, it is representing you and your business. So we'd really recommend adding your logo there instead of a picture. I would save that for your personal account. One of the big things about uh, big differences between Instagram and Facebook is that there's a lot less options for links when you're adding uh, your information to your Instagram account. There's a lot less space for text as well. You know, it's really a visual platform. So we have to make the most of the space that we get. So um, when it comes to your bio, this is a great place to just add a quick overview of who you are and what you offer. This is an amazing place for you to add a hashtag. So if you are a business and you have a hashtag specific to your business. So for instance, here at Punch Pass, we use hashtag people of Punch Pass. So people who use us can use that hashtag and promote that, you know, that's the kind of community they're part of. And um, we'll get into sort of the nature of hashtags in a moment, but um, you know, that's something that we really think is a great place to put it in, right in your bio. Another thing is that your bio gives you the option to add a link. And that is one link. You can add one link here. And so one of the things that we use at Punch Pass and that we've seen a lot of our users take advantage of is a free service called Linktree. And what Linktree does is it gives you the option to create a link for your business. But then once um, people click on that link, it takes them to sort of a page where they can click on a lot of links. So you set up um, you know, the offerings that you might want to have 
in your link tree. And this gives you a lot of different opportunities. And so I'm actually going to exit out of the presentation um, to show you uh, what, what you can see in uh, Linktree. So one of the things um, I wanted to highlight, we're gonna highlight some of our users. One of our uh, Punch Pass users is Wellness with Andrea and they have a really beautiful Linktree. As you can tell, they have their logo and then the colors are really nicely set up um, with that. Uh, so they, you know, again, it's super branded and that looks really nice. Uh, but I wanted to show you some of the cool things that you can do with Linktree and working with Punch Pass. So one of the things we definitely would recommend if you're doing any sort of special offer, um, especially for new customers, again, that's really what we're trying to do here is get people interested in taking a class with you and becoming your regular customers. So one of the things you might wanna do is add a link to a promotion that you're running. And one of the great things with Punch Pass, if you're using our discount code feature, is you can actually link to a purchase of, you know, purchase a pass page, but to one that's already had a discount code applied. So uh, from your purchase page, you can add your discount, click apply, and then use that link and share that out to customers. So having that in your link tree to give people the option to, you know, purchase a free trial is a great way to kind of get people right away using your system and right away getting involved. And so promoting that up at the top is a really great way to do that. Um, and then of course, you know, you could link out right to your punch pass schedule, your schedule of classes. Uh, another thing that you could do is if you are looking to highlight a specific class, a specific event, you could filter for that particular type of class or location. Maybe if you're supporting multiple locations and you wanna highlight those, you can take that link and as you can see here, I have an option here, salsa classes, and that takes us right to a filtered view of our schedule. So really with, uh, with the combination of using Linktree, your punch pass links, and maybe you know, other links if, you're, if you have other sites or other landing pages that you wanna direct people, it's a great way to use the, you know, uh, or I guess it's a way, way to take sort of the opportunity that Instagram presents with only a limit of, you know, your kind of one major link and giving it an opportunity for you to add a lot of links and a lot of different um, things that you can feature really easily right from your Instagram bio. So that's um, something that we use at Punch Pass. We've seen a lot of our users uh, take advantage of that free service. So we think that might be something you'd be interested in. And then let's talk about hashtags. So a hashtag is something that you can use, you can create, or you can use existing ones in order to get um, access to people and content that you might not ordinarily be able to have access to. So if you are highlighting your business and you know, like us at Punch Pass, we use hashtag people at Punch Pass. If any of our users post something and use that hashtag, we can search for our hashtag and we can see the hashtag activity and other people can follow it. So you can go ahead and follow hashtag people punch pass. And as you're kind of doing your scroll through your Instagram feed, you'll see other posts by people who use that hashtag. So maybe you don't follow them. Maybe you don't have a direct connection to them, but because they posted with that hashtag, it's a way for you to access that content. So that's something that you know, would help you potentially engage with your existing customers or engage with potential customers. And it's also another way that you could um, interact with other people by using other popular hashtags. You know, a lot of different brands and businesses use them. Um, you know, some pretty popular ones are like Lululemon does the sweat life uh, hashtag. So people who are you know, kind of using their, their uh, workout tools or their, um, their outfits might post and use that. And that's how they can see content with, um, you know, and follow content with that. So if you want to have, you know, follow certain fish fitness hashtags, that's a way to see other content. And if you use those hashtags on your account, then people will be able to see that content if they're following those tags. So it's a way to get out there. It's a way to get involved. It's a way for um, you to kind of build your own content. And so it's something that we think is important to take a look at and consider creating for yourself and also following some popular fitness ones, which we'll, uh, we'll highlight a couple of those in a bit. Um, 
So next we're gonna get into content. And when it comes to your content in social media, Facebook and Instagram have some pretty big differences, but a couple similarities. So you might see that some of your content that you post in one place might also work in the other, and that's great. But you might want to also take advantage of the things that those platforms do really well um, that are specific to them. So when it comes to Facebook content, um, you know, what we'll see a lot is there's more options to add links and add more uh, or longer uh, text posts. So again, highlighting our, uh, our user wellness with Andrea and have op op the opportunity to add a post with a um, with the punch pass link with a little bit more text than maybe you'd see in an Instagram post. You can do that. You could add links to other sites, uh, blog posts, different things that you might want to highlight um, and really, you know, kind of post on your page to get, you know, more interest, more involvement. And that's something that you can do a lot more on Facebook than say you can do on Instagram. So that's an opportunity to add links to anything you're working on or things that you're doing or letting people know what's going on with you. Um, also highlighting any events or again, linking to your punch pass page. One of the cool things that we have set up in Punch Pass is that you can go uh, into your site and upload a custom image for any um, of your Punch Pass links that you're sharing on Facebook. So from your public web pages uh, area of your settings, you can go in and upload a uh, a, an image, excuse me, an image that every time you post a link uh, that's one of your punch pass links, it's going to include that image automatically on Facebook. So that's cool. And you can change that at any time. So I know some people do that, um, you know, do different images uh, every month, or they keep it the same and keep it consistent. So you know, hey, when you're clicking on this, you know, you're going to part of their schedule. And so that's something that you can do within your punch pass account that works really nicely with Facebook. One of the other things you know to highlight, if you're not going to be using the um, call to action button, the book now button, you can also make a post on your page, say posting your pass uh, schedule or some about you information. Maybe you want to get a little bit more in depth than what you posted um, on your regular page. You want to make a post about you. You want to highlight something. You can always create a post and then pin it to the top of the page. So right when they go to your Facebook page, that's the first post that they'll see um, no matter what time you posted it or what date you posted it. So if that's gonna be you know, the easier way for you to post to your, you know, your punch pass schedule and that's how you wanna display it, that's a great way that you can do that. And again, using that custom punch pass uh, schedule image that you've uploaded, then you post your link and that's something that you can pin right to the top and make it super easy for people to book. Another thing we think is a really great way to engage on Facebook is doing, um, you know, a regular or a consistent post. So something that might be really popular would be a daily move or a daily workout, or, you know, maybe that's going to be weekly, depending on your ability to, um, you know, post regularly. Obviously, it depends on what, you know, your timing and your availability. But this is a great way to demonstrate your expertise give people an image of you or instructors, um, you know, kind of demonstrate some of your, um, your offerings without, uh, you know, giving everything away. It's just a quick photo. It's a quick explanation of you know, something you can do. And it's a way to kind of get people engaged and involved before they've even signed up with you. So that's something that, um, you know, we think could be a really great opportunity to post to Facebook. It also could be something that you also do in Instagram, but that's something that we think um, is a great way to kind of engage with people before they've even signed up for a class. Another thing that you know, we're gonna highlight is posting about your intro offer. So content that you might wanna be posting about regularly is if you're gonna be offering anything special for new customers, that's something that you wanna post and maybe switch up every once in a while. So it's not the same post every time. So you might be offering a free intro class, you might be offering a free trial week, whatever you're looking to do, maybe you're doing a special for um, the holidays, 
that might be something that would be a great way to kind of post that on Facebook, maybe pin that to the top if it's a promotion that's happening for a certain amount of time. But that's definitely something that would be great content to add to your Facebook page. Another option uh, is to also offer a free video recording and post that to your Facebook page. So if you're using PunchPass and our content, content library, you're able to upload a, um, a video to the public. So you might want to upload a free trial class that people could attend. And um, what's great about that is that on Facebook, you could include a link directly to that video recording in your content library. So it's you know, promoted on Facebook, it's giving them a chance to take a class with you, even though they could take it at any time. So it wouldn't have to be, you know, restricted, they could take it, you know, any time of day, because it's a recorded class. And then it also directs them to your schedule page. So not only could they take that recorded class, they might poke around and check out your pricing, check out your schedule, and maybe consider, um, you know, taking more classes with you because of that introduction. So that would be another thing that if you're offering something like that, especially if you offer other recorded classes, that would be a great way to highlight that and share that on Facebook. Because again, Facebook, we're looking at links, we're looking at different features like that. Um, and now I wanted to show off, um, we have, you know, we're highlighting a couple of our punch pass users and I really love um, how Girl Fight Fitness took something that's normally really, you know, sometimes very static like a photo and they actually set it up to be a video. So we're gonna take a look at what they've done to their Facebook page. <laughs> tell right away by um, a video like that and for that to be you know their introduction um, to that page um, that that is you know that's going to be um, you know a good vibe or a really good understanding of like what they do at Girl Fight Fitness you kind of get a feel for what they do a video like that is really like um, Kind of exciting way to just get started when someone comes to your Facebook page. So if you do have a video or you have videos of, um, you know, promoting your business or showing something off again, anything special, anything new, anything exciting, it's just a great way to kind of highlight who you are and, and show that off in a way that's, that's not always used on Facebook. So we really like that option. I think it's, um, it's, uh, yeah, it's a pretty cool, it's a pretty cool way to do Facebook a little differently. And then another thing that uh, Girl Fight Fitness offers through their Facebook is a private group. And so a private group in Facebook is something that you can set up and you can you know, share the link and invite people. You know, you have to, you can approve who wants to join. So that could be you know, a specific group for people taking a specific class, or in this case, they're doing it for their Thanksgiving fitness challenge. And this is a really great way to focus your engagement. So, you know, a lot of people are moving virtual and they're doing a lot more online things and they might be feeling that the sort of camaraderie community feeling maybe isn't, isn't as strong in that situation. So one way to improve that is to offer something like a group where people can post, um, you know, ideas or, you know, sweaty selfies after taking a class, some uh, fun video of them doing a workout move, chatting about what their goals are, you know, so that's a way that you can get really engaged in a, in a very focused way in Facebook. And it's not, um, not quite the same as your own page, but it's something that, you know, would be a little bit more um, involved with the community and, and engaging. And so this is something that would require a lot more management and, and, and involvement on your part because you'd want to make sure that you respond when people post and that you're, um, you know, you're kind of moderating that group. But if that's something that you have a bit more time to manage right now and you'd be interested in kind of, again, building up some engagement, creating that community feeling, uh, I think that's a really awesome opportunity. So next we're gonna talk about some Instagram content and some things you can do with Instagram that's a little different from Facebook. 
So the biggest thing about Instagram um, that's a little bit different is uh, really focused on pictures and videos. You know, that's really what um, you're looking to add to your Instagram account. And so when you're on your Instagram account uh, for, your, for your business, uh, you can add all, you know, you have the option to here to add you to um, your account in a couple different ways. So there's a couple different types of posts that you can do. And so the first one is a regular post to your, um, to your Instagram grid, to your, you know, kind of on your account. It's a post that's gonna stay there and it's gonna be a bit more static than some of the other options. And that can be a photo, a video, you can add multiple pictures, um, but that's gonna be something that, you know, really is gonna be representing your business. So if that's, you know, that's gonna be something where you might wanna post like that, um, you know, a video of an instructor doing an awesome move. And, you know, that would be something that you might want to post right to your page. Um, you know, sometimes we have seen a lot of our users post very funny memes or, you know, silly posts to kind of, you know, get people excited or engaged and interested in taking a class. So if that's something funny, if that's a picture of you working out with your dog, if that's, um, you know, walking through your studio, studio setup to kind of show that off, there's a lot of different things you can post there, but a post is going to be, you know, right on your page. And um, that's going to be a little bit different than, say, a story. So um, we're going to walk through stories in a little bit, but the option to add sort of an off the cuff picture or video or just, you know, some text that you want to add to let people know about something, a screenshot of your schedule for the day. A story is something that's going to be uh, more temporary. So it's going to last for, 24 hours. And that's something that people can kind of swipe through as they're looking through, you know, what are, what's, what are people up to today? What do they post to their stories? That's something where you could post, you know, a daily thing, or when you have the time to post something like that. And that might be a, an example of where you'd add that like move of the day or workout of the day or something that you'd want to highlight there. Um, and when it comes to highlights, uh, we also have the option to take your stories and save them right to your page. And so that's something that, um, again, we're gonna, I'm gonna show you an example of in a moment, but that way you can take those things that were temporary, like uh, you know your move of the day from Wednesday, and you could say, oh, I'm gonna make a highlight of all of our moves from the day. So instead of them disappearing forever, you can you know, have them right on your page as a highlight for people to review later on. And now most of the content that you post to Instagram is gonna be short. Like it's gonna be a picture, it's gonna be a really quick video. Like under a minute is usually what you're looking for when you're posting to your page or posting, you know, especially to your stories. Those are gonna be really quick, like 15 second videos. Um, but you do have the option of Instagram added their Instagram TV videos, which are any videos that are longer than a minute. So people will get a preview while they're scrolling through your, your account or seeing you in their home screen, um, but then they could click in and watch the full thing. So you have a lot of different options here in terms of what you're going to be adding to your Instagram account. Um, but we think there's a, a lot of opportunities there. Now, when it comes to your posts, this is a great time to use your hashtags. So a lot of our users do, um, have what they call a hashtag bank. So you kind of have your growing list of hashtags you want to use and maybe post along with all of your uh, all of your posts to your Instagram account. So these are really fun ones, you know, um, like, you know, hashtags that you can uh, look at and, and, you know, scroll through, but also you want to make sure that you're tagging with your posts because anyone who follows hashtag move your body as they're scrolling through will see that come up. Um, they might see your post come up and maybe they wouldn't have engaged, have engaged with you before because there isn't a direct connector between you and them, but especially as a lot more people are using uh, virtual classes and can teach to anyone anywhere, these hashtags make it possible for people around the world to maybe take a class with you. So definitely start taking a look. If you don't have this right now, um, you know, these are some great ones to get started with, of course, but you can take a look at other fitness hashtags and um, see what other people that you follow post. And that's a great way to kind of start building that, um, not just for your posts, but also ones that you can follow and get inspiration from. 
So when it comes to stories, one thing that you'll notice when you add a story or when someone has a story on their account is that Instagram highlights their logo um, with a little ring in the Instagram colors. And that's how you know that there's a story there um, and that's live. So you can click on that to view. Um, and that's something that um, you know, you'll see if you're using Instagram that that'll come up. And you know, while I'm highlighting salt yoga again, they did a nice little, you know, quick today snapshot of what the schedule looks like. That's a great way to highlight what's going on with you today. Again, the um, you know, move of the day might be a great thing to highlight. Um, if you've got anything going on, I think that's a really great way to kind of just say off the cuff, here's what we're doing today. Here's a funny video of an instructor doing something silly. You know, that's a great place to put it in your stories. And then um, the nice thing about stories is that they don't have to go away. Uh, so you can do what like with uh, Wellness with Andrea does is once they create a story, they can add them as a highlight. So for instance, um, here are the highlights of the daily movement. So you can click on that and get a reel and you know, kind of go through the, the videos um, of the daily moves. So they're not gone forever. So that way you can kind of have that content still on your page. It's something that people can still interact with. And that's kind of a, a nice thing. That means that you know, the stories don't have to go away. But of course, if you don't want to keep a story around, it'll be gone in 24 hours. You don't have to worry about it. So when it comes to interaction on Facebook and interaction on Instagram, there's, you know, a couple different questions people have, you know, how do I figure out who to follow? When am I liking things? What should I comment on? You know, what are tags and how is that different from a hashtag? And that's, that's some really good questions. Those are some good things to think about. But the biggest thing to consider is that with social media, engagement is going to promote more engagement. So if you follow someone, most likely they'll end up following you back. And that's going to be one of the biggest ways to grow your, grow your web, grow your network, grow your, uh, you know, community on social media is to like other pages, uh, you know, follow other people. And that's going to be the biggest thing to help you in, you know, grow your base is to follow people, you know, that you like. Um, you know, and, and commenting and liking and engaging with different people is going to be really important because that means they'll more likely follow and like and comment on something that you do. So definitely don't be afraid to get involved and just, you know, kind of walk through and like a lot of things or follow a lot of people. That's a great way to get started and just kind of give it a go and give it a try. I think the biggest thing is to not be um, too timid, especially where social is concerned. It's really a good time to really embrace putting yourself out there and, um, you know, really approving of people putting themselves out there too. Because if uh, someone posts something and you like it, they're going to feel good and they might want to check out what you have to offer. So that's something that's, you know, certainly important and special and, you know, something to consider when you're thinking about how to get involved and how to engage on these different platforms. So when it comes to who to follow, I think one of the most, uh, the easiest ones to uh, consider are your existing customers. Your existing customers are people that you engage with already. Certainly it's something that we would recommend if you, you know, talking about it in your classes, mentioning it. Again, you could mention that you have a hashtag and say, hey, tag us if you're posting, you know, a workout, tag us if you're posting anything to do with us or your, you know, your fitness journey or your nutritional journey. That's something that people might want to consider. And especially if you put that out there, include your Instagram handle or your uh, Facebook page on all of your communication with customers. That's one thing, you know, you can direct them to follow you, but certainly you can be proactive about this. One of the other things that's really cool is that if you're already following your customers, you can also see who they follow and who's following them. So this is another way to kind of build out your network is to say, okay, so these are people who already engage with me and kind of are, are involved with my business. So let's take a look at who they're with, who you know they're following and who they're engaging with because those might be similar people or those might be people who would be just as interested in what I have to offer. So that's another way to kind of branch out and start connecting with people that you are, you know, kind of 
one, one degree away from or two degrees away from so that you can build out who's going to, you know, have heard of your name, have seen your logo, have watched a story and checked out something that you've done. And that's just going to, you know, improve engagement. It's going to get more people interested. And again, more importantly, it's going to hopefully get them along the lines to taking that first class with you. So when it comes to knowing when to like or comment, can we think you can be brave about this and post and like and comment and interact with people that you're interested in or that you think are posting something cool? You know, definitely take into account your business's core values. So, you know, you want to be, you know, uh, friendly, welcoming, whatever things you like to use to describe your business. When you see posts like that, that's when you want to like, that's when you want to comment. Uh, if you're a very uh, animal friendly uh, instructor, then when people post a picture of their pets, that's absolutely when you want to start commenting and posting, um, you know, fun emojis, you know, the cat emoji with heart eyes is a great one. I use that all the time. That's the kind of engagement we're talking about. You know, it's, it's a lot more casual when it comes to these Instagram likes and comments. It's definitely more of a friendly engagement. And so when you see something that's fun or funny or feels like it's got the right vibe, you know, don't worry about it. Don't hesitate, like, and feel free to comment. So one big feature of, um, you know, both Instagram and Facebook is that you have the opportunity to use tags and hashtags. So these are a little bit different, but they have some similarities. So the hashtag, right, using the number symbol or the pound sign uh, is what you're going to be doing to uh, collect content from multiple different users. So like we said, you know, hashtag people punch pass, you know, it's not any one person's post, it's everyone who posts with that specific tag. So it's getting a lot of content from different people. The tag or using the at symbol is when you want to tag a specific account. So if you wanted to tag us at punch pass and let us know that you, you know, you're posting about us, that would be the one to use. And so when you're making a post, generally what you're going to want to do is put your hashtags in your text and then use the tag feature to tag an account. So if you want to let, um, you know, someone know that you're tagging them. This would be a situation where if you have permission to post pictures of your customers, you know, you might want to talk to them about tagging, but that would be probably something that would be a great opportunity is to tag your instructors, tag your customers. If you have a video, if you have a picture that's relevant or that they're in, then that would be a really great way to kind of notify them because the tagging feature using that at symbol is going to give them a notification that they've been uh, mentioned or they've been tagged. The hashtags is something that people follow or look for. So that's more, um, you know, kind of gonna be a little less of a strong notification that we're talking about you specifically. That's the tag feature. Um, so that's kind of the difference between the two and how you might wanna use them. So we're going to get into a lot of uh, more details about social media in a couple different ways from Punch Pass. We have um, a lot of blog posts that are going to be coming your way. So we definitely recommend checking out punchpass.com slash blog. That is our blog site and you can see a lot of different posts there and we are going to be posting a lot of different content about social media in the next coming weeks. So keep an eye out for that because we're going to be getting a lot more in depth and that's going to be pretty cool. We think that's a really great resource for anyone who's interested or anyone who's in this, uh, who's in this industry. We're also going to be reaching out uh, at the end of this webinar, and we're going to be asking you if there's any topics that you'd like us to cover or um, you'd like to see more information on. So we're definitely going to take questions at the end of this, but when we're all, you know, when this webinar is over, if you have anything you'd like to see more about, so whether that's about social media, whether that's about punch pass in general, anything else about the industry, definitely type in a response there so we can make sure that we're getting you the content you're interested in. And we are also currently building a social media downloadable guide. 
So that's going to be something we're going to be um, promoting in um, you know, the next couple of weeks. And we're going to be posting about that. So a little bit more in-depth written text information about what you can do with social media and some things that we definitely recommend we think would be really great for you to consider. So keep an eye out for some of these things that are coming your way soon. And definitely let us know if you have any questions or if you have anything that you'd like to see us cover. And one note I just really want to get out there is, is don't be afraid, be brave. You can do this even if social media is like a, second la uh, like a second language to you and you've been doing it forever, or if it's like a foreign language and you've never even tried to speak it before. It's a new way, it's a, it's a new thing that you can get involved in. It doesn't take too much time. It's something that you'll get used to and you'll get, ex you know, get comfortable with it as you keep going. So don't be afraid to post, don't be afraid to you know, make a mistake. Um, honestly, there's a lot of great fitness fail uh, Instagrams out there just posting you know, some things of things not going perfectly and those are very popular. So you know, don't be afraid to kind of lean in. If something makes you laugh, if something's funny, if you enjoy something, then most likely people who would be interested in taking your classes would also be interested in that. So don't be afraid, you can definitely handle this. And you know, it's just a, a couple steps here and there, posting here and there, you know, getting involved, getting, you know, maybe if you got a regular schedule you want to keep to, that's awesome. We definitely would recommend it, but don't be afraid to start small and kind of grow from there. You can, we you know you can handle this and we're here to help. So next we'll be taking questions. So in the chat box up at the top, I see we've had a couple questions already, um, but definitely reach out there if you have any additional questions. Um, I did actually get a question before the webinar started, so I did want to answer that. Now, uh, someone reached out to me and sent me an email and wanted to know how we'd recommend they improve their posts because you know they're a dance studio and usually they'd be posting videos of people in classes and at their studio where they can take nice, nice videos, nice pictures and really highlight that. And now they're doing pretty much all of their classes via Zoom. And it's not really, um, you know, they're not really sure how to make content in that situation. And so what I would recommend is, you know, there's, there's a couple different things you can do. Um, you know, this is where you can definitely take advantage of the fact that you probably have uh, a lot of technology available to you, hopefully. Um, so if you're running a Zoom class, you can always also, you know, have your, your computer set up with Zoom and have your phone in the corner. So you have maybe a, uh, a nicer quality video from your phone being taken of you or the instructor. And that could be something you could use for social media. You could also reach out to your customers who are Maybe they have a little bit more time on their hands right now. Maybe they're, um, you know, kind of looking for a project or looking for something fun. I think a lot of people are looking for something fun to do right now. So maybe it's asking them to take a video after class or, um, you know, trying to, you know, take a video of them performing the dance, something that you're doing, um, any kind of fitness move, that would be a great opportunity. And then the other thought I had um, is that you can lean into Zoom too. You know, if you're doing a Zoom you know, class, you could always you know, take advantage of the fun grid and have people do different uh, dances or poses and take a picture of that or a screenshot of that. People know what's going on right now and people are pretty familiar with Zoom at this point. So you know, it's definitely something that you can, you can consider highlighting or leaning into because that's something that you're doing right now but maybe a mix of both would be a good option. Oh, um, someone had a, a great question about um, the call to action button on Facebook and how to set that up. Um, so one thing, um, I will show, because we're, we're live right now, um, is in our support library. Just because I search for Facebook. Um, so um, we have an option or a, a nice how to here, and we'll probably be sharing this out with you um, to highlight how to set up the book now button. 
So we have a, a little walk through here with pictures. So that'll walk you through how to do that. Um, and again, I think we're probably gonna be sending out the link to this how to once we send out the link to the webinar, um, but that's a great you know, resource um, from our library of how to's and you know, how we integrate with Facebook. And so that's kind of a nice walk through. And I think that's a great option there. Let me take a look at. My question on how do you set up Linktree within Instagram? Um, so I'm not logged into Instagram right now, but when you're in your Instagram account, you have the option to go into you know, your account and edit your profile. And so in your profile, you'll see there's an option for you to add website. That's kind of the only link on Instagram. It's like that website link. And so that's where we'd recommend adding your link tree so that people can see that and um, click on that from within your bio. Oh, someone reached out. Is this video going to be available? Absolutely. We are going to be sending the recording out. No worries if you've signed up to, uh, to take this webinar and you weren't able to get on early or you got on late um, or you want to reference this again, we're going to be sending out an email with a link to this recording so you can access it at a later time. Uh, we had a question about where you keep your hashtag bank. Well, the biggest thing that I would say is that, you know, when you get started, you might want to just have that in a document um, just as, you're, as you start building it. But what's going to be great is that when you're in Instagram, once you post one thing with your hashtag bank, you'll be able to go back to it and see it in that post and then um, use it again. So um, in terms of your hashtag bank, that's something that, you know, as you're scrolling, you can definitely, you know, check out the hashtags that you follow, um, maybe add them to a list in a separate document. And then, um, you know, yeah, copy that and paste that into your posts on Instagram. And then, um, you know, you can always copy and paste, that, uh, paste it again, if you've posted it before um, in your account. Oh, cool. So someone reached out and just wanted to let us know that they're really comfortable with using Facebook, but Instagram is kind of new for them. And absolutely, I'm really glad we could help out with that. You know, it's, it's, there's going to be some people who are really comfortable with one or the other and maybe haven't, haven't checked out, you know, the other one yet. And so definitely there's a lot of similarities, but hopefully we've kind of covered what's a little bit different between Facebook and Instagram. And you know, the biggest difference I think is that Facebook, you wanna make sure you get your text and your content out there. You know, you can definitely do links and pictures, of course, but a lot of that business information is really key to have that you know, nice and professional on your Facebook page. And Instagram is gonna be, you know, yeah, use that link tree to get people to, you know, consider booking or taking a trial class, uh, use your uh, engagement and your, your funny photos, your funny videos, and really make that, um, you know, a fun place for people to engage with you, especially for your customers who might have a little bit of time. Yeah, so this is a great question. Someone reached out um, and asked if we can post on Instagram from your phone because they've tried to post from the desktop and it's not an option. Yeah, so one of the things that I think is really uh, a big difference possibly for Facebook users and Instagram users is Facebook is definitely great to use on a computer. You can certainly use the, the phone app. They have a phone app for that. But in terms of um, uh, uh, Instagram, yes. So uh, <laughs> there was a little typo. You, uh, the question was, can you only post on Instagram from your phone? And yes. So if you wanna make a post to Instagram, you are gonna be wanting to use your phone app. You can still um, access Instagram from your uh, desktop, but in terms of you know, making posts and adding to your stories, then you're definitely gonna wanna use it from your phone. It's really meant to be you know, used via uh, like on a smartphone. So yes, that, that is. Oh, this is a really hard question. I love this. Um, <laughs> if you only had time or only wanted to stay more up to date on one platform, would you choose Facebook or Instagram? 
This is a really, really tough question because, you know, I of course want to say both. And I guess my thought would be, if you're going to be posting a lot and you want to, you know, kind of have that engagement, I would kind of lean towards Instagram. And, you know, if you're doing, you know, trying to get active, trying to reach out to people, I think Instagram has a lot more uh, potential engagement in terms of people who scroll through it all the time, every day. Um, Facebook, I think you want to keep up to date with your business information. So, you know, that about me page, um, the, uh, you know, the contacts, the book now button, but those are something that you can kind of set up. You know, we think posting to both is awesome. And you can also do that, which is kind of great is from your Instagram account. If that's the one you want to use and you want to, you know, kind of post there regularly. You can also connect it to your Facebook page and post to both at the same time. So in that situation, you're not really optimizing your posts for one platform or another, but if you really only have time and you're like, I really post a lot and I want to post to one that's going to work the best for me, I would pick Instagram, but you have the option to then, you know, sort of cross post it to Facebook as well. Oh, sure. And you know what? Someone reached out and said they're, they're working a little bit more with seniors and a lot of, you know, I think this is a good point is that what you might find is there's going to be potentially an age difference in terms of people who are using one platform or another. So you might find that um, people who are a little bit older are using Facebook a lot more and that's what they're using for their social media. Um, but you might find, um, you know, people of the millennial generation or Gen Z is going to be a little bit more uh, Instagram focused. So that also might be something to take into account is um, who are you targeting? Do you think more of your demographic and people who'd want to take your classes are going to be on, you know, one platform or the other? And that might be a deciding factor. But, you know, we think it's an opportunity to take, uh, you know, to take a look at both of your sites, take a look at your Facebook page, take a look at your Instagram account, and just make sure that things are up to date, you're promoting the things you want to promote, and hopefully that'll get engagement on both platforms. All right, well, I think... Oh, thank you so much. Um, well, I think we've, we've gotten to a lot of questions today and I hope we covered a lot of content that you were interested in. Again, we're gonna be asking you a message or a question about other things you'd like to cover when we get off here. But I just wanna thank everyone for taking the time and joining us today. We really appreciate you checking out our webinars and checking out the content that we have to offer. We hope you're enjoying, uh, enjoying this series and I uh, hope everyone's staying safe and healthy and we'll see you again soon.